taken a job with Hennepin County that excites me because it will give me the opportunity to improve outcomes for many of the people I have served in the legislature. It also means I will be part of the effort to help Hennepin County and its partners succeed in implementing health care reform. This does mean, however, now that the state budget has been resolved, that I will be resigning my seat in the State Senate effective August 15, 2011. I want to take this opportunity to thank my constituents who have sent me to the legislature for many years. It has been rewarding for me to work on public policy that has improved the lives of many Minnesotans. I've had the opportunity also to work with many organizations that have helped me learn so much. Some of the highlights of my career include working on health care cost containment and access to affordable health care, mental health reforms to help people be served in the community, jobs for people with disabilities as well as single parents, pay equity for state and local government employees, community-based services to help frail elderly stay in their homes, and improved quality of child care. During the last six months, I have felt that my talents and skills have been underutilized in the Minnesota Senate, as I see so much of what I have worked on over the years being chipped away or repealed entirely, I worry that our state is moving away from the community spirit that has made us such a great place. In the future, however, there will be others in the legislature and the Dayton administration who will step up to the plate to do the unfinished work of health care reform, as well as standing up for the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. I look forward to continuing to use what I have learned in the legislature and to continue learning as I work now at the ground level to make policies that I've worked on at the state level work for people in the community. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Senator, uh, is this the first time that you've served in minority and how much of a factor was that in your decision? Well, I served in the House when we were tied and every committee I served on that year was chaired by a Republican. But uh, it's the first time I've been fully in the minority. And I, I would say it had some, Im some bearing on my decision. When did you come to this decision? Well, I guess it would be when I was offered the job. <laughs> it's the only job I applied for. And I feel very fortunate to have been selected, and I'm very excited about this opportunity. And um, when I was offered the job, then I had to make this decision. So there was no chance that you could have stayed, done both? Well, I, th they wanted me to stay through the budget, and I wanted to stay through the budget also. Looking back on it, I'm not sure why, but. <laughs> Um, but at any rate, uh, you know, now the budget is over and it's time for me to go on and give all of my efforts to the new job. What is your job title and can you describe it for us? I am a public policy manager and it's a, uh, they've restructured an old position into a new position. So um, as I said in the press release, I will be working with Hennepin County and its partners. Uh, including the hospital and their health care systems and other community partners um, in helping them get ready and do health care reform. At the end of session uh, on the Senate floor, you called the HHS bill in its form at that time the worst bill you'd ever seen in the legislature. Did it get better or did it get worse en route to the version that was ultimately signed? Well, there were some things about it that were definitely better. We didn't eliminate health coverage for 150,000 people. That was important. But there were other things that were in it that were not in the bill that went to conference committee that I think were um, inadvised. Um, for example, repealing the Minnesota care tax. 
Have you given any thought to the historical significance of your service? You appear to be the longest woman to have served in that chamber and tied for the longest woman to have served in the legislature. Uh, anything that you take from that? Well, I'm so glad there are more now. <laughs> Bergman, 38 years in almost any government anywhere and in many businesses would earn you a pretty good retirement. Is Minnesota down the road going to help fund your retirement significantly? And what do we do on that? Well, I hope the retirement system for public employees stays sound and healthy. And But, you know, our retirement is based on our salary, and our salaries in the legislature are not huge. Senator, could you give us an idea of what your what you feel like your biggest accomplishments were over the last, you know, over your time? It's a hard question because, um, you know, at the time they all seemed important. But I, I would say the creation of Minnesota Care has to be landmark, and there are many other states in the nation that are envious of us because we have that legislation. Um, I would say the health care reform efforts that we worked on in 2008 were important in getting us ready for the federal reform that we are now going to be able to participate in and, and, and our, our state is better prepared to do so. Um, you know, there are the mental health reforms to help people be served better in the community, not need as many hospitalizations. That's clearly very important. What are your, some of your biggest disappointments? Well, I, I would say my biggest disappointment was um, being the chair of the Health and Human Services Budget Division for eight years of budget deficits. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was tough. You know, um, I hope Minnesota will be over that soon. Do you think it will be? I don't know. I thought we would be this year, so I'm not a good predictor, I guess. But Do you think there's any long-term solution for this tug of war between costs and excess and um, Politics seems so polarized, uh, especially since the national bill passed. Well, I mean, I think one thing everybody agrees on is we do need to control health care costs. And it's unfortunate the federal reform has been so politicized because it has a lot of tools in there to help us do that. Um, one of the things that excites me about this job is I will be part of a team that will be not just trying to control health care costs, but bringing social services in to help meet people's needs in a way where their health care costs will go down. And it's unique that Hennepin County has every, everything that they can bring it together. And um, so um, I'm, I'm optimistic and I'm happy that we're as a state now taking these things seriously. I believe people will be better off because of it. Uh, I believe we'll be a healthier, more productive state, and I believe we will bring down health care costs. I hope policymakers in the future see the link between health care costs, housing, and social services, because um, it, it becomes very important that you not be pulling out pillars that are needed to support the entire cost containment effort. Other questions? I just want to thank the press. You've always been very kind to me, and I appreciate the relationship that we've had. Thank you.